but I didn't know what I was going to do with it. I, I I had a suitcase full of stuff. You know, what am I going to do with a suitcase? A literal full of suitcase full of stuff you pulled out of books. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It was a little, I got from the junk man. It was like a wicker suitcase <laughs> and I filled it up with all this stuff. And then since, and, and it dawns on me, it's written by a Confederate soldier. Uh, I think from Mississippi, and he was writing home. So he would have been, according to the birth notice, when he wrote this letter, he was 18 years old. Oh. Yeah. So then I flipped over the page under the death notices. There was his name, and he died in Atlanta on such and such a date. When you look it up historically, that was during Sherman's march to Atlanta. Oh my. everybody and welcome to another edition of the rare book cafe the book lovers rendezvous and this week i'm rendezvousing as usual with my co-host lee lynn ridge books calhoun georgia hello lee hello ed it's good to see you from washington this morning i understand I am. I'm in Washington, D.C., visiting my grandchildren, and I had hoped to do this broadcast from the Library of Congress, but the NATO meeting's in town, and they're uh, having some sessions over there in the uh, Jefferson Building. So I found a little corner of the Madison Building, the cafe up on the sixth floor, and uh, that's where I am. And they didn't ask for your input at the NATO, uh, NATO meetings? No, I had hoped to join NATO, but I hadn't paid my fair share, so uh, uh, they wouldn't let me in. Yes, we've heard all about that. Well, we heard we're, all glad, about that. We're, we're glad you found a place, and we're delighted today to have an old friend of the show, David Hess, from from Orange, California. Yes, uh, yes. David, we used to have David every week when we had the hour show doing his segments, Things Found in Old Books. But we think we're going to hear a little bit more than just things found in old books today. David, it's del we're delighted to have you back. It's been a long time. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. I appreciate and it. And since uh, we took a little hiatus in the show, you can now find uh, David every Friday afternoon on Instagram uh, doing his own things found in old books. Absolutely. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube every Friday. So I Whatever got it all good covered. Wherever good oh. podcasts are given away for free. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've said that a lot lately. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, David, you're becoming a, a, quite a sensation, quite an, a, an internet hit. Um, I don't know if you've gone viral yet, but with book lovers, you're at uh, you're up the top ten percent of uh, people things what people want to hear. I, I I appreciate that. I I don't I I don't know that. I I just go by likes or whatever I but I doubt if I've been viral uh but I've had you know I've I just love doing what I do and and it, it's really for people who who like books or find ephemera kind of interesting and if nobody else watches it I'm okay with it because I got a core base of fans who reach out and tell me that and that's all I'm happy with that I'm just happy and I think the thing people like uh one of the most things I like about it are your t-shirts You've got a different <laughs> T-shirt on almost every single week. You must go several months without doing laundry. <laughs> well, you're, you're right. You know, and I do have a, a plethora of T-shirts, and and I got to have a new one each week. And, and uh, so that becomes a little bit of a challenge. But uh, I, I had already started collecting T-shirts long before I did the show. So I had plenty to work with. I just had to add to them since. Well, I think they've been a nice addition to the show. And um, uh, do you do you want to tell us some of the things you've found recently uh, or something new that's coming up this week? And we understand. Uh, well, I uh, I have been, I'm doing a two, a middle of a two-parter. I, I, I found this 
this book of, of, of uh, high school memories. Right. Uh, yeah, I so saw it, that. It, yeah, it really, it really wasn't a thing found in an old book, but it, it qualified because it's full of stuff. And the uh, the the person was from 1925, and so it was all kind of you know that that era uh, which I love and and. Uh, uh, you know, she had all kinds of stuff and she even had stuff glued in there and she has pictures and and this week is, is the pictures and the calling cards and stuff like that. And it's just, I find it so fascinating. Now, I, I am interested, uh, I love ephemera. I love looking at old things of of how we were in the past. And so some of the stuff I find is, is kind of mundane, maybe a, a little ad for, for toothpaste from 1930. It's just like, you know, that's, that's how it was back then. You, yeah. know, you, you can read history books, but finding stuff from people that they've collected over time adds a human element that, that you don't get from a history book. And, and uh, again, I, I, I find that fascinating. When I first started in this business 40 years ago, I worked for a gentleman uh, in, in Anaheim and he would find stuff in old books and he'd look at it pitch it right in the trash he would uh, yeah, throw it away and i was like you know i i was like what are you doing you like and i so i started collecting this stuff and i and uh over time it became this tv so show you, you the, keep these items do you catalog them as well uh, well no i don't you know and i'm not i you know i'm really <laughs> i i I get really fascinated with the item, share it, and then I've lost my interest. And I really, I'm not a, I'm not a good uh, uh, historian as far as cataloging and logging in. In fact, I had a whole suitcase full of stuff and I ended up selling it to somebody who was a, a craft person. They made crafts, uh, craft books and stuff like that. So I look back on that now because there was some just really cool stuff, but I didn't know what I was gonna do with it. I, I, I had a suitcase full of stuff, you know? What am I gonna do with a suitcase? A literal full of suitcase full of stuff you pulled out of books. Yeah, wow. yeah, it was a little, I got from the junk man. It was like a wicker suitcase <laughs> and I filled it up with all this stuff and then, since that time, though, when I I, I have a couple of boxes uh, like these old shoe boxes with you know with the stuff, and I I have it up in a shelf in my office, and and so I haven't thrown anything away uh, lately, and and now I'm a little more cognizant of of things that might be good on the second. I don't know for for somebody. I don't know if anybody ever contacts me. We're watching the show, and they and they say, "Well, I really like that." I'll send it to him. I, I I would love to send it to him. And now uh, I have to guess one of the most commonly asked questions is the one that I would ask. You ever find any money? Yes, foreign money. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the segment that you did that you had the Japanese money and the the Filipino money. Yeah, that was the other day. I, yeah, I found that's this the other book. day. Oh, yeah, that was I found interesting. This yeah, I found this book, and it was a, a whole Western Americana book. Uh, Burns something, uh, uh, Graveyards of Arizona, I don't know. And and I'm looking through the book, and I found this this uh, uh, Filipino dollar from you know 1945. And, well, that's really cool. And I set it on the counter, and I started turning the pages, and I I found a Japanese dollar. And then I went through the thing and found like 12 World War II era bills. Uh, all tucked throughout the whole book, and uh, a lot of them had uh, military, monetary meaning that they it, it was it was it, the Japanese would either printed it for the Philippines, and later on it was the American version of of their money for the Japanese, and uh, so yeah, it was fascinating stuff. And and real quick here, uh, oh well, uh, I don't have it; it's over there. Anyway, I found this this dollar bill uh, that came in. It was one dollar bill, looked just like a dollar bill. It was from 1940 something, but it had the words printed, not right on the top. It said Hawaii. You turn it over, it says Hawaii. And that, it, what it was is that it, the government printed Hawaii on all their money in case the Japanese conquered Hawaii, that they they could make the money invalid, so the Japanese wouldn't capture the money and 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 then use it for, for whatever. So very I had never, well, huh? Those are very collectible. 
Yeah, you know about dollars. Him? Yeah. Yeah, I'd never heard of it. I'd never heard of it. So that's how I learned, you know, I, how would I ever know that until I pull it out of a book and, and then start looking it up? Because why does it say Hawaii on it? And uh, yeah, and so I found that uh, a while back. And yeah, so I do find, I, I, I have found money one time recently. I did find some money and I'm not going to tell you how much, but it, it was a... Uh, it was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Hawaii thing is, sort of goes along with the concerns of the government of of Japan reaching the western part of the United States and the, um, you know, observing up in Washington and uh, northern California along the coast and the internment camps. It it seems to kind of go along with that 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 feeling of concern that we were well, yeah I, I, you know in, in in hindsight you can look back and think oh you know japan never came close to taking over but i think in the 40s or there was you real know concern about it. yeah the, the the paranoia was was much larger than no one knew what what could happen what could go on and so yeah. you know people you know the reactions were much stronger yeah everything That's in hindsight my father-in-law brought back a lot of European money from World War II, but he didn't put it in a book. <laughs> he just put it in a <laughs> jar. <laughs> yeah. Hey, everybody. Look who showed up on the screen here. It's our producer. And the reason Lynn? I had to, to uh, pop in here is because I wanted to add um, a um, an item that I found. Not uh, Well, it's been a while now, but uh, but it was the same era. Uh, World War II, and it was a dollar bill, an American dollar bill, but it had written on it um, one of the islands in the Pacific, and it uh, indicated that the uh, that the people who were involved with it would come back there and meet later. I don't know if they ever did or not, but uh, oh, after the war, they intended to come back. Well, that's that, that's awesome. I also wanted to to add one other thing, and you guys can talk about it uh, later. Then I'm going to go away. But uh, but I wanted to add one other thing. Years ago, David used to do videos to promote his store, and and you guys probably don't know about that. But uh, I just wanted to get that in there so that uh, you you can talk about it, and then we'll put a link to. Uh, yeah, you mean like Art Linkletter's Kids Say the Darndest Things videos? <laughs> <laughs> he did some very, very clever takeoffs on uh, movies and so forth to, to promote his store. But he's, uh, in in addition to doing uh, these... Well, isn't that uh, how you and I met? It, it was, as a matter of fact. Because uh, you, you had seen a video and reached out to me or something. You were, or... you were doing a video and I had done some videos and you were asking about them and suddenly we we, we were... Uh, and here we are. We, and here we are. So I'm going away, but I just wanted to, because uh, there are things going on in the back. Uh, Alan, there, the uh, cafeteria is to... filling. Excuse me, Alan, a cafeteria is filling up. Is the background noise too bad in here? No, not at all. Okay. No. Okay. Well, so you were way ahead of your time, David. Uh, and for <laughs> well, it was it was I, I had given myself a challenge. I wanted to do uh, a video a week for a year. And uh, wow. I used to do reg regular video. When I shoot my videos now for things found in old books, I am so low tech. I am Mr. Low Tech. I just have my phone. I have uh, iMovie, which came with the phone to do my editing, and the titles are simple. It doesn't do transitions very well. It does some, and so it, it's it's really on on the on the on the low tech of the low tech, and and I like that because I, I like what I'm doing is low tech. Books are low tech. Uh, ephemera is low tech, and so I just kind of you know what that's fine. That's that's fine for what I do, but back in the old days, I had the. The uh, Premiere Pro. I had a, a beautiful video camera. I had all kinds of fancy you know, lights, equipment, and and uh, and so I I had this stuff. And so that's when I decided I was going to make a video a year. And uh, so I I did one a year, one a week, and 
some of them required a lot of work. I mean, there was the the writing, the the, the getting together, the editing, the and and I I, had, I would have to film them basically before we opened, and uh, and and then I'd go home and I'd spend all day Sunday editing together and. And uh, so it was a lot of work, but it, it taught me a lot of video skills. Are they on I YouTube? Learned... What's that? Are the videos they are on YouTube? They are also on YouTube. Where can, you our, where can our listeners of... find them? You have to, uh, it, there's a Bookman Orange. Uh, Bookman Orange. On the top of the page, it says David at the Bookman. Um, and, and basically, when you scroll through it, all you'll see is is my mug doing that things found in old books and you'll say oh jesus that's all he does yeah but if you keep going you'll start running into the uh, videos that i did uh and uh like we did takeoffs of 2001 we did takeoffs on the godfather we did uh, created our own videos uh, my favorite one is the takeoff in the uh igmar Bruber movie with the with the death guy in black and white you know the seventh that's seal yeah, playing chess and stuff like that. That's my personal favorite, and uh, so they're all, they're all it, it's, they're all available to watch. Right. Everybody, go to YouTube and search for David Hess, uh, the Bookman Orange, Bookman and Orange. Uh, they'll yeah. show up. Yes, the Bookman yeah, Orange. Yeah, Bookman right. Orange. Yes. I noticed you had on a 2001 T-shirt the other day. Yes. For one day, maybe not recently, but when I was scrolling back on some of your. Your yes, face. I did. I did. I noticed that. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I love that shirt. I yeah. love that movie. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, Alan had told us that you had a Civil War letter that you were going to. Oh yeah, that's that's probably. Us. I would say that that was uh, one of the best things I ever found, and uh, to me, it was probably uh, right at the top. Um, I had got now back. You, you you have a store, right? Well, no, I don't have a. I have a book room that's open by appointment. But, but okay, but you, okay. So I have a store, right, and we get a lot of donations. I mean, especially right. now, of people like right now, the the, the Goodwill is not even taking books. There's so many books oh, being really? donated, at least on the West Coast. Yeah. So people bring them to us, and they just donate them. They just drop them off. We have a table out back, and we found that this box of books, old books, and most of them were like the covers are falling off, and they're they're like old, and they're they were old but not anything of value. And in there was an old Bible, and uh, again the cover was coming off, and I start going through the Bible, and there was all kinds of like stuff found in old books. It was. A lot of funeral notices from the 1800s and and uh, uh, ribbons and flowers and all the usual stuff a Bible would have. And then there was this, this like blue letter kind of in the in the thing. So I, I take it open and I'm, and I'm reading this letter and and it dawns on me it's written by a Confederate soldier, uh, I think from Mississippi, and he was writing home and he was. He did mention some of the action they had, but it wasn't really graphic in the action. So it was for historical purposes, as far as a historian wanting, you know, generals and, and actions, it didn't have a lot of that. But it, he did talk about how camp life was so boring that they spent so much time just sitting around waiting to do stuff and that that he was the camp pastry chef because his mom had taught him how to make pastries and and uh it was just full of chit chat like that and asking about how the neighbors are at home. And uh, so, I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I again, I, I love the letter and, uh, you know, it took me a long time to translate it because it was written really yeah. small with, with, with <laughs> I don't know, a fountain pen and, and it was written. And I'm like, I spent, I, I must've spent three hours finally deciphering the letter. Uh, and then I started looking through the Bible and I noticed that they had, birth notices and so i'm looking through the birth notices and and it, there it was samuel was born on such and such a day and, and uh so he would have been according to the birth notice when he wrote this letter he was 18 years old oh. yeah so then i flipped over the page under the death notices there was his name and he died in atlanta on such and such a date, when you look up historically, that was during Sherman's march to march. Atlanta. Oh my. That war, and it, and there was his his the day he died, 
and he died in Atlanta. And it was like, oh man, I got chills. I mean, I was I was reading this, and then without the Bible to give me the the birth and death notices, it was kind of it was still a great item, but that made it like it made it so real. It was like, oh my God, you know, it's like here's this 18 year old kid, you know, writing home to Ma and, and asking about the neighbors, and and then you read that you know that he that he died in that that. Atlanta and such, you know, he would have been, I think by that time, he would have been 19 years old, 19 years old, and he got the letter and they put it in the Bible. And somewhere along the line, someone just dumped it at the bookman. Mm. So mm. it's weird, right? You know, there's no explaining. No. You know, Truth I, is stranger than fiction. I, yes. I, I wondered recently, I sold two letters from a printing company in Savannah that were dated from 1865 and one of them was saying that they it was to their customers and they were saying they could not get the supplies they needed to print could not get ink could not get paper you know all of this and the other was to their creditors saying that because they were not able to do any business they were not able to pay their creditors and i have no i don't know anything about the newspaper business in the south during the war but i wonder you know how much because most of the things we know about like harper's weekly and things like that are northern productions you know they're not produced in the south that that a lot of what people knew about the war came from these letters written home by bored soldiers waiting to be killed practically in essence yeah, yeah in essence yeah. and and i and i i think because we've had a fair number of civil war letters and one that I have right now is a song that um, a man wrote, uh, and he says what it's to be sung to, but I could not find, I couldn't the, find the, the right music. I uh, couldn't find the right music, but it was, but but it, but I wondered, you know, how much uh, Southerners' perception of the war was really colored by these letters. Um, yeah, well, it 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 really it, it shaped my view. I mean, it. Uh, uh, it, it it, it just brought home how human and how we all are so human and and, and basically it's the same thing you send children off to war right and, well, i'm and, five miles from a battlefield here battle of Resaca was okay just oh well you're, you're steeped in that knowledge which yeah. is, you know which is part of the march to atlanta you know which right. is part of that um uh, so he died. Well, I have to tell you, you know, I spent some time in the army. I was stationed in Hawaii and stationed in Korea. And uh, this was in the 70s. And uh, my mom used to write me every single week. And I still have every one of those letters tucked away in a box, hopeful that someday uh, somebody like you, David, will open up that box and go, wow, a piece of history. Yeah. yeah. And well, that's what it is. the ones that, that my father in law wrote during when he was in Africa and in Europe and um, as an airplane mechanic. And we have notebooks of those letters that, you know, I don't know what's going to happen to them. I, they're, well, that's that's the question. What does happen to I, this? I don't, know. I, don't know. I don't know. I mean, it, it, uh, it's, I don't know. I don't know what happens to the ephemera. I just well, kind of next week the price of a stamp goes up to 72 cents so uh, nobody's writing <laughs> letters anymore yeah <laughs> yeah not many people write letters you know and, and 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 that's kind of when i find things in old books too that things like that gets like the other day i found a, a ticket to a baseball game I mean, I, I, if you saw it uh, yeah you, it made me start thinking that you know, when I went to see a show recently, I didn't get a ticket anymore. There, right. There's there's no tickets. I I and I'm an old geezer, so I, I everything was on my phone. So I mean, when I went to the show, I had to show my phone, and and nothing was ever printed out, and a hard copy of nothing. It was strictly digital. And then so I'm looking at this ticket, and I'm realizing, you know, though this is a mundane item, it brought it made me realize that there are things like these are, are are just disappearing from our landscape. That's a little piece of ephemera that's just not, I don't know, you know we, That makes me think we need to have a digital librarian on the show one day to talk about 
this world of emails, yes. this world of text, this world of electronic communications. Is anybody besides the government and AT and T collecting them? Is anybody uh, doing I, I something with them to turn them into a piece of history like these Civil War letters once were? I, I don't know. That no would either. be an interesting. That would be interesting. Well, we just had a text from Alan that said emails don't make great ephemera. <laughs> right about that. It, it's it's right true. It, it, it's absolutely true. You know, I, um, I totally agree with that. I, I we see that happening, and and uh, uh, so the things found in old books are what's going to be left? To be, are people right. going to even have books? If you have a digital book, you can't leave anything in that. So no, you you can you can make notes in them. However, yes, okay. You know, and then somebody else, <laughs> yeah. Um, an, someday, another, someday, David, someone's going to have a show called "Things Found in Old Computers." Yeah. <laughs> and another thing of interest with your, with with you, David, are your is your art. I love your art. Though Alan and I were talking about it the other day, and we frequently have no idea what it means or who <laughs> these interesting characters that you draw are. But I just love seeing them on Facebook. I, I'm grateful. Yeah. I, you know, it means a lot to me. I, I, I started. Well, I've always drawn all my life, and not seriously. That, but during the pandemic, when we had to close the store for like three to six months, I don't even remember. It was a long time. I didn't have anything to do really, so I just started drawing, and I never gave it up. And uh, I, it's just something I like to do. I wouldn't. They're they're kind of cartoons. Uh, I don't know sort of, cartoons. Yeah. I don't know what they're called, but I just love to do them. And for you to say that, I'm very grateful. Thank you so much. I, I, Did you draw that book man on your logo? No, I didn't draw that. That was done by a oh, professional graphic. Yeah. Well, you could. <laughs> but, you, you could. Uh, you could start. If you want to look at my art, it, uh, I'm at on uh, on Instagram at I'm at Hair Hess, H A I R Hair. Okay. I used to have long hair. I used to have long hair, hair hats, all one word, and you could look at all my all my uh, artwork there, uh, and and I appreciate. I'm very grateful. Thank you. All well, right, everybody. Enjoy uh, following after, up. <laughs> all right, everybody. So you've got two assignments this week: one to go to YouTube and and look for orange books, and uh, book one and to go to Instagram and look for hair hats. Yes. We'll find Book a little bit more about this mysterious gentleman. <laughs> uh, I'm just a bookstore owner. That's all I do. That's all I ever was. I'm a bookseller, first and foremost. And you know, my book, my bookstore is it's not really collectible. We just have a very large bookstore full of books for people to read. And uh, you know, I don't have take a lot it from of... take it from Lee and myself. Book dealers are the most interesting people in the world. <laughs> They certainly are. And, and but, one thing that book dealers I've discovered don't do as much digitally as a lot of folks is they still pay with checks <laughs> because it's, it saves us money if we take checks instead of. Well, in, in all honesty, in all honesty, no one really writes them anymore. So uh, it's, it's, uh, we're lucky if we get a check, not lucky, but we're, yeah. we, we get like a check a month. Well, I've gotten, I got on the last Getman's view, virtual, uh, you know, online book fair, I actually got three checks. Yeah, that's a lot. Something of a record. But yeah, when we first checks. opened up, you, you had to make a bank deposit. You'd have to write the number of the checks on the back of the bank deposit slip. You'd have to make a list, and then you'd have to get your calculator and add them up. And now, <laughs> now, well, now we just take okay. pictures of the check. Yeah. <laughs> and now you can deposit them on your phone. You don't even have yeah, to go to the bank and deposit them. Take and, a picture you know, that, and say, that, 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 give me my money. That was something else I brought up in one of my episodes because I found one of those, uh, 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 you know, you get from the ready teller, except for it was from the 80s. So it was, it was a card. It was like, they used to come out as little cards and uh, before they had thermal paper, I guess. And I got to thinking, well, what the banking is, I couldn't even remember the last time I actually went in a bank. You know, it's like banking has changed. I mean, it's like everything's digital. You know, there's so much of our world that's disappearing from when we were youngsters. Right. And if you need we cash, there's a cash machine outside the bank. 
What's who that? works in there anymore? What's that? I said, who works inside the building anymore? I mean, there's no reason to go in. I, I yeah, I think they're dead. Remember, you used to have to wake in long lines on Friday or something. You'd have to you'd have to sit in a long line. And, right. Oh, geez, you know the bank line. And heaven forbid you went to the bank on the last day of the month. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing all this with us. And maybe we can do another show just on your artwork. Don't wait so well, long I, to come back, love, David. I would love to. I would love to. I'd love to share my artwork. Lee, I'm so grateful. Thank you so much for bringing it up. Ed, it's always a pleasure. You could you could do a line of T-shirts with your art on it. <laughs> I thought about that. That would be fun. That would be fun. Yeah, I, I, you know, I have a, I have a, I, I have a love hate art uh, relationship with my art, which is oh. I think common with people who create. Is that hey, that's really great, and then you look at it, go, oh, that was crap. You know, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> it's I don't know. It's just me. But well, I think uh, it's again, I, I'm very grateful. I'm I'm grateful that you guys uh, brought me by, and I would yeah. love to do it again. Do it, well, and I'll and I'll wear a different T-shirt. Okay. You know? Well, it's it's yeah. been too long since we'd seen. Well, you, so. this and we'll never know whether it's clean or not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, all right, everybody. Thank you for all joining right. us for another episode of the Rare Book Cafe, the Book Lovers Rendezvous. David Hess, always a pr pleasure. The multi-talented, multi-disciplined, and uh, multi-bespeckled David Hess Orange Books. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye, uh -huh. everybody. Take care, bye -bye. Lee. Bye-bye, Lee. Bye. Keep smiling.